This video session is very simple. We're going to add some extra fields into our user model like phone number and description. And then we're going to create a page to show that user info. So in your terminal, we're going to type Rails generate migration add extra fields to user and the fields we're going to add is phone number string and description text well, so as you can see Rails just create a new file for so under db migrate so here is a file it just create now we need to run rec db migrate to migrate this chain into the database in our project folder open config browse.rb now we need to add resources users and we only want that for show only okay so this means that we only want to create a path URL path for showing user only. If you don't understand this one, that's fine. I'm going to explain this in a bit. Now, next thing we're going to create a new user controller. So under app controller, we're going to create a user controller. We can do that by create a new file and that's named user underscore controller dot rb and here we're going to create a new class which is users controllers sorry no s and that should inherit from application controller all right so in here we just need to show information of user so i'll just create a method named show and inside this method, we're going to say user equal user dot find params id. All right, so for showing the user information first, we're going to get a new variable named user, and then based on the user id as a parameter, we're going to find that user in the database, and we're going to display. The user information based on this in our view so it's time to create an our view so I'll just close this one a bit now under app views I'm going to create a new folder named users and under that users folder I'm going to create a new view named show.html.erb all right so here we've got show now remember that we got a show method here in a controller. That means it's gonna execute this live code and then it's going to pass this parameter into the user show.html.emb. Okay, so now we're going to show in something simple like this. Alright, just very simple for testing. Now restart the server and open your web browser. If you go to users slash six, six is the user ID. Alright, and press enter. So now we go, we got the avatar and we got the full name of this one. If you're not sure about the user ID that you're looking for, I suggest to open SQLite and open user table and you can find the ID here. Very easy. Okay, so basically we have info that we need to show, but the style doesn't look great. Let's transform this view and put some style sheet into it to make it look a bit nicer. Now we first start with remove this one, and I'm going to create a new row. Alright, so inside a new row, I'm going to create two different columns.
Now for this first column, I'm going to say deep center and is one. I'm going to add the image tag. Alright, so the image tag here for the class of full avatar, that's mean we're going to split the avatar with full width. Okay, now next we're going to create a new div panel. Right. So for the first column, I'll just create a panel, and inside that panel, I've got the email address and phone number. We we'll just leave it like this for now. And in here, I'm going to say user dot phone name. Right. And for this one. This one we're going to display the user description. Now, as you can see, we just add a new style sheet in here, which is a description, and also we add a new row space three classy. We don't have this one for now, but we're going to add a new one. So, open your app access and style sheet. Open the application.scls. Here we're going to transform our style sheet by making a new style in here on top of the bootstrap. First, we're going to modify the body tag and the class of container just like this. So for the body, the whole color would be this color and the background color would be this one. And for the container right now, we're going to get a width of 80% of the whole width of the screen. Next, for the netbar, we're going to modify just like this. Remember that we're going to use the netbar default class and the netbar brand. So I'm just modifying the background color to this color. And for the netbar default, we're going to use the color of this one. The font size would be 2 EM and the phone width should be 400. Don't worry if you don't understand this all of this information because I'm going to show you in the browser. Now for the button, we're going to modify the button just like this. Now first we got the BTN primary and remember that BTN primary is a bootstrap class. So now we'll modify this one with our custom design on top of the bootstrap. So now we get an auto one pixel solid with this color and body radius two, font width bow, font color this color, and for the text color would be this one which is white. And for the padding, we got the top with 10 pixel, 10 pixel, and the right one, the bottom one, and the left would be 25 pixel. All right, now for the B10 primary, if we have the mouse or focus on that button, then the border color should be changed to this, and the bottom color would be this, and similar to the background color and no outline. Okay, and the similar thing for active, we change the border color, the background color, and the outline would be none. And this, that is for the B10 primary and for the B10 default that's very simple we just want the width would be 
100%. So if you put this B10 default in a div, that means it's gonna the, the width would be 100% of that diff, All right? So the border radius will be two, and the padding top and bottom will be 10 pixel, and left and right will be zero. The marking top for this one will be 10 pixel. Okay. Next, we're going to modify the panel default and panel heading with this color and the background color would be this one form size would be 18 pixel and the form weight would be 400 also as you remember we're going to define the row spec tree now um, for our convenience I'll define different row specs so we've got row set 1, 2, 3 with different size of marking top and marking bottom which is very convenient to us to use in later step. And lastly, we're going to define the description class, which is um, we're going to show our user's description. So for that one, the color would be this, font size would be 15 pixel, font weight would be 500, and the line height would be 20 pixel. Okay, so now we just done it and save it. Now open the web browser and hit refresh. Voila, much better. Now we got an avatar, you got a verification with the panel here, and also you got a full name of the user. Now we haven't got the description yet, so that's why you can't see the description. But let me show you how the CSS work. If you open the tool on the more tools and develop a tool. Well using Chrome, so I suggest you to use Chrome to get the developer tool. Now see that for the body we just change color to this. So the background color would be that one. Let's play around with this one. So let's say if you change, can you see that? You got the text color chain as well. So that's for body. So for the background color if you want you can change to red just something like that. Yep. So that's mean the whole body get a fed of that. Now go back to the net bar. So here is a net bar that we get. All right. If you want to reset to the current state, you can hit refresh. All right. So then we go back to the current setup. Now for the net bar. Okay. Now we got a white. If you want to change this, all right, to whatever you want and also for the color and if you go to click on here to inspect the panel heading you should have the panel heading and panel body and here we got a panel body 15 pixel and you can change it to 35 so obviously you can see the effect of that now I'll change 25 yeah that's it so based on here you can play around with the CLS and now as you can see it's not hard to understand and work on CLS at all even if you are new to HTML or CLS. At Code for Startup I try my best to simplify things as much as I can so people can follow up easily in any level. Okay so I hope you enjoyed this session and be ready for the next one. I'll see you then.